in probability sampling methods randomization is the key a, uh, key aspect on the basis of which the sampling is made as against this there are other possibilities or other rationales for selecting a sample which are not based on randomization all such options are used in non probability sampling methods some of the possibilities could be at times it could be the researcher's own choice sometimes the situation demands even at times uh, the participants uh, interest or one's willingness to participate in the research is also considered so depending on what is in the focus there are different types of non probability sampling though there are various types there are certain common features about non probability sampling which are common to all these types of uh, non probability sampling methods since there is no randomization involved in non probability sampling methods the every population unit does not get equal opportunity to be a part of the sample and hence the selection probability of each sampling unit is unknown to the researcher thus the resultant sample may not be the true representation of the population that means some of the features could be lopsidedly present in the sample that is selected or at times it could get avoided this procedure definitely suffers from sampling bias and because of this the inferential statistics cannot be used when these kind of sampling methods are adopted if there are so many limitations when while using non probability sampling method then why do we select this kind of a sampling method in a research there are certain situations in a research that demand the use of non probability sampling methods or at times it one is left with no other choice but use the non probability sampling methods some of the situations could be list of the population units in the population are not readily available in such case it is advisable to go for non probability sampling methods sometimes some population elements are absent so one cannot take a decision of uh, having the equal opportunity for every population unit to have its representation or equal opportunity to be a part of the sample in such case one goes for uh, non probability sampling method option in qualitative researches where generalization is certainly not a focus but the focus is on the process on one's experience in such cases randomization of the sample is not necessary and one definitely goes for non probability options where some other factors come into picture like the person maybe who is directly related to that event or who has directly experienced a particular phenomena that person is considered as a part of the sample sometimes the cost involved in going for randomization in probability sampling methods is so vast that it is not advisable to go for such methods so the researcher is left with the choice like using the non probability sampling methods these methods are also popular since they are very cost effective and uh, not much time is required for the sampling process we will uh, understand these sampling methods in detail under non probability sampling methods they are purposive sampling convenient or accidental sampling self selected sampling snowball sampling quota sampling each one of these sampling methods adopt a different base for selection of sample that base is certainly not randomization but even for each of these sampling methods this reason for selecting a particular person as a part of the sample changes so we will now understand how that base changes for each of the uh, sampling method and how sometimes a research situation demands a particular type of non probability sampling method 
we will see an example of a research where a researcher is interested in studying ICT usage by school teachers. Now, though there are many school teachers, all of them cannot form a part of the sample or all of them cannot have the equal opportunity for being a part of the sample. All the teachers will not be using ICT. If they are using, they will not be using it to a same extent. So, the researcher would be interested in tapping those teachers who are using ICT to the maximum extent. So, in that case, the researcher would select the sample in such a manner that the, those teachers are using ICT and they will be able to give him some data, some information about their ICT usage practices. So, in this case, the researcher purposely decides selecting certain teachers and uh, in other words, purposely avoids some other teachers to be a part of this sample and that is why this particular sampling method is called as a purposive sampling. Now, here as we see the base is the purpose that the researcher decides, the purpose that is to be served by selecting a particular sample. In this case, it is the responsibility of the uh, researcher to mention categorically what the purpose was and why a particular person has been selected as a part of the sample and why other person has been avoided. Unless this purpose is made clear, it will not give the base for the sampling procedure adopted in that particular research. This certainly has this, all those disadvantages or all those limitations which all the non-probability sampling method has like no generalization is possible and that is why it cannot be the true representation of the population. But here the focus is certainly not the generalization. So, one can definitely use this uh, sampling method if the research demands so. In another research situation where the researcher is trying to study how the youth is using the mobile phones. Youth in the sense say uh, the uh, students of uh, age 20 to 25 years. Now, this will be such a large population and very, very scattered. So, it will be very difficult for the researcher to say prepare a list of them and then select the sample using randomization. So, in this case, the researcher taps those locations, maybe something like say cyber cafe, cinema hall or maybe a college or uh, uh, maybe a mall and then he gives uh, collects the data from the youth visiting at such locations and gathers the data from them and gathers information about how they are using the mobile phones. Now, in this case, the focus is the researcher's convenience. Whatever location and whosoever was easily, conveniently and incidentally available to him became the part of his sample. So, thus there was no randomization, but at the same time researcher did not need the generalization per se anyway. This is that kind of a study where he just wants to gauge a general or a very superficial kind of information. When such kind of superficial inquiry is the focus and the convenience of the researcher is the focus. Such kind of sampling method is called as convenient sampling or incidental sampling. As the title suggests, it is only researcher's convenience and because of which incidentally whosoever happened to be at that cinema hall when the researcher collected the data, they become the part of the sample. So, this kind of a uh, data or this kind of research is largely used for just getting a general uh, say uh, liking for a certain particular uh, brand or particular product. This once again has a limitation of no generalization and because of no randomization, but that is anyway not the purpose or at times this is the randomization is not possible. So, researcher is left with no other choice but to go for 
the convenient sampling. There are certain researches where a lot of time and inputs on the part of participants is expected. For example, the research is related to say medical treatments or maybe cosmetics. In that case, the researcher though can have say a list of population units. One cannot expect that the population unit that is selected through randomization should be ready to participate and go through this treatment. So in such case, the researcher has to give the option to the participant that who is ready to volunteer for such kind of a study. And thus the focus here becomes the voluntary participation. And when such kind of a sampling is made where the participant himself or herself say, yes, I want to be a part, is part of this sample, that kind of a sampling procedure is called as self-selected sampling. So in this case, as you see, though uh, randomization is not involved at all, yes, but it is not even a researcher's decision who should be a part of the study. So here in this case, the decision is in the hands of the participants and the researcher is left with no other choice but to go along with the volunteers and conduct one study. Now once again here generalizations would not be possible and uh, the personal traits of those volunteers would be certainly different. But then the researcher will have to go ahead with that and uh, the statistical procedures of higher uh, sophistication will be required to be ad administered at a later stage. Imagine a study where a researcher is trying to study the effect of yoga on diabetic patients. Now this kind of a population will certainly not be gathered at one location and hence it will not be possible for the researcher to once again prepare a list and go for randomization. So it will also be not possible for the researcher to know that these are the various people who are following yoga and having diabetes as well. So in such case what happens is suppose researcher incidentally comes to know about one person. So he goes and talks to that person, collects the data from that person and then asks that person through his further networking whether he knows of any other person who is diabetic and who is uh, following yoga. So suppose that person gives him another two references. So then the researcher goes for collecting data from those two references and this procedure of taking further references and collecting data continues. So in this case as you can see the data collection began with one person and finally would end with such a figure or such a number which the researcher cannot predict in the beginning. So it just goes on increasing as the ball will move it will go on increasing as the networking uh, will be tapped more and more by the researcher the more data could be gathered and hence this kind of a sampling procedure is called as snowball sampling. So as we have seen in the example it is used in those kind of researches where it is just impossible for the uh, researcher to even gauge how much population would be and hence cannot decide on how much sample he or she wants for his own research. So this is once again, a, a, you can see it is a combination of maybe a self-selected sampling as well as incidental sampling because it will be a matter of the person's willingness either firstly to participate in that research and also whether to give or not the further references, whose reference to give, how many references to give, nothing will be in the hands of the researcher. So in this case as we have seen the situation demands that the researcher is compelled to use this kind of a sampling method and thus collect the data. Once again the generalization will not be possible the collected sample will not be the true representation of the population. But still at times the situation demands and the researcher has to go for 
snowball sampling. In certain situations, a researcher is given the quota of uh, small population groups in the bigger population. In that case, the researcher considers the same quota distribution in the sample as well. So, the proportion in the population is retained in the sample uh, just exactly. Now, this is very much similar to the stratified random samplings proportionate method. So, in that sense, this particular method that is quota sampling is not completely non-probability sampling method. So, up till this stage it is it has some features of probability sampling methods. Once this quota is fixed, who will be the part of the actual sample will be left to the non-probability method. For example, here no list will be prepared and the persons will not be picked randomly. That is the difference between stratified random sampling and quota sampling. So, what happens here is imagine that suppose we need 5 males. So, it is the, the first male uh, researcher comes across the data is collected. The second males he comes across the data is collected. Likewise, till the fifth male uh, he meets the data is collected. And once the fifth male, uh, the data from the fifth male is gathered, then he stops the sampling process and collection of data from males. Now, what happens in this case is, uh, uh, it, since this part is in incidental and cannot be planned, at times it may happen that all the male uh, who are the part of the sample may happen to be of the, say of the same age. So, they may not represent the issues related to the other age groups. They may happen to be uh, persons speaking the same language. So, it will not represent the matters related to the other language speaking people. So, these are certain limitations, but still uh, maybe at times one is not left with any other choice and then uh, the researcher goes for something like quota sampling. This is once again an efficient method of sampling and the researcher goes uh, uh, ahead with that. Very less amount of researchers time as well as cost is involved in incurring these kind of uh, sampling method. So, we have seen in all the kinds of non-probability sampling methods, there is lot of cost cutting and also time efficiency when we adopt any, any of these kinds of methods. The judgment that the researcher has to take is what is the situation demand, what does the research demand, what does the objective demand and then accordingly the sampling method needs to be adopted. In most of the qualitative researches, we will see that there is no, uh, since there is no generalization expected at the end of qualitative researches, many of the non-probability sampling methods are used in qualitative researches. Though the non-probability sampling methods have the challenges that the findings cannot be generalized, they still remain the popular methods of sampling especially in the qualitative researches. In qualitative researches, the focus is on the process, the focus is on one's personal experiences, one's perceptions about it, where the generalization is not expected. So, here is a perfect match between the sam uh, sampling method and the research method. So, the non-probability sampling methods thus have lot of implications and lot of usability in qualitative researches.